So people believe that there's something wrong when there's a problem. And I'd like you to write this down if you would. Just a simple phrase, really simple. And that's this. Your biggest problem is you think you shouldn't have one. Your biggest problem is you think you shouldn't have a problem. And yet problems are a sign of life. That's what makes us grow. It's what makes us feel most proud. If you own a business and you found a way to succeed and you had those early days where you're struggling with cash flow to survive and somehow you made it through. Whenever I'm sitting down with buddies of mine who've made a billion dollars or more and they have huge empires, what do we all talk about? The early days when we're struggling because you have so much joy from what's come from that growth. See, every one of us in this room is probably experiencing some stress in our lives. And all of us, I don't care how rich you are, how beautiful or handsome you think you are, how funny you are, how many people love you, how much anything you have, how many beautiful children, the only way you're gonna be able to stay fulfilled and happy is you gotta keep growing. We grow or we die. Focus on what you want and you'll get more of it. Focus on what you fear and you'll get more of that. Bottom line is, almost everybody in life focuses on what they fear and that's why they get more of what they don't want. Right. Oh yeah, but what if this happens? What if that happens? If you keep asking, what if this happens? What if that happens? I guarantee you're gonna crash. It's only a matter of time. Instead, you gotta say, well, what if this happens? What I want. What will happen when I make this happen? What I want. And the more you focus on that, the more of an experience you'll have of what it is that you want in your life. And you'll get it right away. Now, here's the problem. You gotta still hang on to your F. What is it? Faith. You know what faith is? Faith is understanding the seasons of life. Life comes in seasons, doesn't it? It's not always the same, but it's still predictable as a whole. How many of you are surprised when winter comes? Can I see a show of hands? No, you wouldn't be surprised. You don't be surprised when winter comes. And are there emotional winters, yes or no? You better believe there are. Are there times when you try to communicate well, it doesn't work? Are there times in the office where it feels a little frigid, a little cold? That's not just the air conditioning. What happens during a winter? You break out a fire and warm each other up. See, some people freeze to death in the winter. Other people ski. The meaning of winter is whatever you do with it. Isn't that true? Winter, there's nothing wrong with winter. What if it was always summer? Oh, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, I think you're bored with summer. I should probably get burned. Now, some people get burned in the summer. Some people get tanned. Some people swim. Some people go on vacation. Springtime's a great time, too. You get to plant. Fall, you get to reap. You know what happens to some people in life? What some people do is they say, okay, I'm doing what you said, Robin, so I'm turning my focus, but it's not working. You're still in lag time. God's delays are not God's denials. God's delays are not God's denials. You're in lag time. It'll catch up. Hey, look, you think it's fall. We're still in winter. Or you think it's fall and you're in spring, or you've made it to summer, but we're not to fall yet. Don't be so darn impatient. Take on a new prayer. Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now. <laughs> be equally intelligent. It's like some people think, okay, I know what I want. I want this seed to be a plant. They stick it in the soil. And they come back the next day and they go, where's my plant? And the soil goes, are you new? That's not how it works. You plant it here, okay? You come back every day and take care of it, right? You make it through the whole spring. Then during the summer when it's hot, you gotta really, really take care of it because it gets even worse during that time. And you make it through all those seasons in the fall, maybe, more than likely, not always, but most of the time, you will have a plant here. That's how it works. You know, that's not fair. That's the life is how it is, not how you think it should be. Because if you come back each day, the plant will see you come and start laughing, you know? Giggle, look at this guy. What's the matter with him? Why don't I have it yet? Lag time, that's why. Don't make yourself wrong because you're doing the right things and you don't see the results yet. It takes time. Most people completely overestimate what can be done in a year and underestimate what can be done in a decade. I can tell you my own career, my own life, my business life, I gave my heart and soul every day, every day, 276 seminars a year. In the morning, noon, and I giving my all. Anybody who knows me will tell you, all my all, every day, no matter what. And you know what? I was broke, I was frustrated outside in terms of the business, business work, nothing was working. Huh? And I kept you know, asking myself great questions like, why am I screwing this up so much? It wasn't me screwing up, it's lag time. I had to make distinctions, I had to build something, it takes time. But then the other day I got a little reality check, which we're going to teach you today. My reality check is I fly up to Los Angeles to do my seminar up there. 
in my helicopter, my jet helicopter. It's a tough life, but somebody has to live it. <laughs> so I don't have to drive for three hours. I jump in my helicopter, I'm there in 35 minutes. And plus I go down and dive down by the dolphins in the water and lift the deck up and play. It's like having your own roller coaster. And I'm flying over this area where I used to work in Glendale, California. I worked there as a janitor. I drove my 1960 Volkswagen that literally broke down on the freeway one day because the wheel fell off. <laughs> I worked in the middle of the night so I could still go to school. And I got paid $5 an hour. But as a janitor, they figured out how many hours it should take. So I did half the time, did a better job. Because I learned if you give more value, you get to earn more. Good thing for me to remember. But all of a sudden, I flew over the bank and I stopped. Because in a helicopter, you could stop. Like an elevator, boom, right there. And I just hovered above where I used to work. And I thought, that was 12 years ago. Wow. Wow. I never, for four or five years after that, I never thought I could have ever had what I want. But see, the world moves for those who just never give up. The world will move for those who persist forever and who change their approach. They're flexible in how they do it. They don't just do the same thing over and over again. The world will move for someone who has faith. The world moves for somebody who has trust and then acts on that trust. That's what the world moves for. And someday you get to look down and go, God, was there one time? That's pretty exciting. That's a pretty good progress. See, just because you didn't get it when you want it, you may have overestimated in the short term and underestimated your long-term power and potential something you might want to remember. I'm sure you've seen so many beautiful souls who have taken their life, people you may have really enjoyed. Think of some of the comedians you know that have taken their own life, committed suicide. Think of designers that have done this. Anthony Bourdain, the guy on CNN, took his life. This beautiful man. Because when people stop growing, we stop have something new to give. And we have nothing new to give, we feel like our life is meaningless. So if you and I are going to change all this, we gotta say problems are gifts, and my job is crush those problems, learn from those problems, and expand. How many of you right now in this room, this virtual room of ours around the world, how many of you can think of something that happened years ago that was horrible? You'd never wanna go through it again if you could avoid it. You wouldn't want anybody you care about to go through it again, and yet, looking back on it now, three, four, five, ten years back, you see the grace in it. You see that it made you so much stronger and it's made your life richer, even though you hated it. Or it made you care more because you had so much pain for it. How many can think of something like this that at the time was horrible, but now you see the grace of it here? Say I. Say I. Then don't wait. So I ask people, what'd you focus on? What did it mean? What'd you decide to do? And people stay down and share this. And afterwards, one woman raised her hand and she was from New York and she said, you know, last night after your talk, she said, my boyfriend had asked me to marry him. And I told him no, because my previous fiance had been murdered and killed, kidnapped and killed. And she said, I'm not over that. And he said, well, you go to that stupid seminar, then it's over between us. And she said, then fine, it's over. And she said, then when you said that that first night, I got chills. So I called him last night at midnight to leave a message to tell him how much I love him, that I want to marry him. And she said, he called me back at three o'clock this morning. She said, but I didn't get the message, but I have it here. And he was at the top of the World Trade Centers where he worked. And she actually has voice. She was on Larry King later on sharing this. And he plays this thing on and he says, honey, I can't tell you what it means to me to get your message and to know that you love me. You can't imagine how much I treasure it. And he said, unfortunately, I have bad news. He said, I don't know what's happened. But the whole building's on fire. And he said, I'm not going to get out. And he said, so I just want you to know, he said, that I love you so much and that you've touched my heart and my soul so much. And if there's only one thing I could say to you is, I don't, you must be asking why God would do this to you twice with two different men. He said, I don't know, but maybe it's a lesson, honey, that whatever you do every day of your life, love and don't ever hold it back again. Don't hold back love. Don't hold back anything. Love every day you've got. I love you. And he hung up. Everyone in the room is crying uncontrollably. And then the first man who stands up as a man from Pakistan, he says, I just want to say I'd like to hold your hand and say that I feel sorry for you and cry with you, but frankly, I'm from Pakistan, I'm a Muslim, this is retribution. It was like a war broke out in the room. So I brought him on stage and I brought a man on stage who was an Israeli man who truly was, say the least, more than upset with this man. He has family in the occupied territories, he worked in the, in the Twin Towers, so if he'd been there that day, he'd been dead if he wasn't at the seminar. 
and we merged these people. But the biggest lesson I got, they became friends and they worked together for peace. And it's been, you know, five years, whatever it's been now, six years. The bottom line though is this, I noticed something that day. Angry people got angry. Sad people got sad. Worried people worried. Loving people loved. This one woman was so pissed off. If I started that habit, uh, man, uh, I would be at such a different place in my life right now. I'd be so much happier, so much more fulfilled. Meditation is the key to mastering happiness. And happiness is different than success. You could read all the self-help books in the world and become very successful, but you still will not be fulfilled and happy. And that's because you haven't practiced meditation. So start tomorrow, 20 minutes a day at the very least, make that commitment for the rest of your life. You're going to meditate for 20 minutes every day for the rest of your life, no matter what, no sick days, no days off. You're never going to miss a day starting tomorrow. That's your uh, mission. Have you exhausted every possible option, scenario, combination, tool, and approach? I do not simply refer to the ones that you knew of at the time you decided to undertake your task. I mean, have you re also researched possibilities that you had known about? Have you determined whether or not there is another person out there that has performed the exact same task you are attempting or at least something similar? Try that today. Let me know, number one, what you've stopped yourself from doing, and number two, what you're committing to doing today. Because one way to break this is to attack the thoughts and change the thoughts and get into action first. The other way to do it is to recognize that you're paralyzed. Pick one thing that you're gonna do. I'm meant to live my uniqueness. I'm, out, I'm supposed to love the things that make me odd and weird. I'm supposed to love the things that make me strong. I'm supposed to, I was made this way. So let me honor what's good about that 